Hi there, I'm Egfer. So I was recently messing about some designs for Diamond Counters uh, and I came up with a couple of really interesting designs. So I'll give you a preview of two of the others, but today I want to show you this one. It's a one wide tileable, uh, 1 to 15 bit binary counter. You can also build it where you skip every other slice and it becomes a, a two wide tileable 8 bit counter. And that might be easier sometimes if you're going to be powering other circuits from it. Um, but either way, it counts to the rate of one pulse every half a second. That's every five redstone ticks, every 10 game ticks, or we can set a rate of two hertz. So of course it can count slower than that as well. But um, if you try and count faster, strange things happen. So do try and avoid that. Okay. So I said I'd give you a preview of the other designs. Here's a similar one with all the same properties, except it can count up and down. And I want to show you in a later video uh, how to do this because it's a bit more complicated. And if you only want to count up, then actually the one I'm showing you today is a lot more compact and generally neater. So the other design I've got is this one. And it counts to maximum possible speed of one pulse every two redstone ticks. That's every four game ticks or five hertz, right? Um, however, the output isn't synchronized. So you can see the lights are kind of flashing a bit all over the place uh, because it uses something called ripple carry. And we'll talk about what that means in a moment. But once it stops counting, it always gives the right answer and it has a reset to zero. So again, that reset isn't synchronized. Um, but anyway, I'm pretty sure this is the fastest binary counter for Bedrock and certainly uh, the fastest in one wide tileable format, okay? Back to today's video though. The thing that's really special about this design is that it has instant carry. And what that means is that the outputs are always completely synchronized and it doesn't ever show an incorrect value whilst it's calculating the next number in a sequence. And it also has a fully synchronized reset to zero. So I know it's always dangerous to claim a first as um, there are loads of really great Minecraft bedrockers. Um, but I, I couldn't find any instant carry binary counts for bedrock at all, nor any one white tileable ones to be honest, and certainly not both. But um, if you do know of any, do let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to see them. Okay, so to pop a link down in the comments for me. Um, I'll show you towards the end of the video uh, how to have a circuit that allows you to turn on or off individual bits as well. Uh, so in case you want to start counting from a specific value rather from, than from zero every time, uh, I'll show you how to do that. Hopefully you'll agree it's uh, pretty tiny for what it does. I'm going to talk briefly now about how it works and then we'll go into the build. But if you do want to skip ahead just to the build, I'll put a timestamp on the screen now. Okay, so why might you use this? Well, it'd it make a great program counter for a resident computer, probably in a too wide format I talked about earlier. But um, really, anytime you want to count something that happens in your world and you can get a redstone pulse from it, then this could be the thing for you. Okay, so let's dive straight in. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how binary counters work. We're going to start off by talking about ripple carry. I'm not really going to go into how binary itself works. Hopefully you've got some idea of that. Uh, just a recap though, binary is a number system where, you know, we normally use the digits zero to nine. Binary only has the digits zero to one. Other than that, it kind of works the same way, but just being zero and ones makes it easy for computers because they can treat that as on and off. It kind of makes it easier for redstoners as well. So if we look at the, the various digits for binary counter, you know, we've got the ones place, the twos place, this would be tens normally in our system. That'd be hundreds, that'd be thousands. But in binary, because you've only got two digits, it's ones, twos, fours, and eights okay so let's talk about uh, how a ripple carry binary counter would work so we want to add one starting off with zero we want to add one and we add one to the least significant bit that's this one on the right hand side the ones column that's pretty straightforward right what if i want to add another one well i can't go to two because there's no two in binary so what i need to do is i have to look at whether it's already a one and if it is I roll it back to zero and I carry one. And that carry gets added to the next higher bit. And I might have to keep doing this, right? So I keep looping around that until I get to a point where I don't need to do a carry anymore because we were adding one to a zero. Okay, so that's already done now. So we've gone from one to two. Okay, let's look at it again, starting with seven. So this is seven, so it's four plus two plus one is seven. And we add one. So what's gonna happen now? Well, I flip my first bit 
uh, it was a one so i have to carry one this one's one as well so i have to flip that and carry one i flip that and carry one and then add that one onto the last bit so i now get eight right one in the eights column all of the zero i said eight so seven plus one eight good we've got the right answer but you can see how it flowed through the number and each time we calculate a bit that told us what we need to do next whether we need to carry or not and you can imagine if you had lots of bits this will take quite a long time to do and this is a system that's used by my really fast binary counter and that might seem a bit counterintuitive because i'm saying it's slow but it's also the one used by my really fast one well the reason i can use it for that is that whilst the the, the ripple is happening i can keep adding another one i can keep adding one onto the least significant bit and keep going like that and it just kind of ripples through it just means that the output doesn't ever quite catch up until i slow down or i stop so let's talk about instant carry binary counters how do they work um well it starts off the same i want to add one uh, but this time the way i'm going to look at it is i'm going to flip all of the bits from the least significant bit remember that's the right hand one the ones column um from from that least significant bit until the first zero now in this case the least significant bit is zero so it's just that one so we flip that if i want to add one again the least significant bit to the first zero is both of those. So I flip both of those. That goes from one to two. So let's look at our example with seven again. So now from the least significant bit to the first zero is all four of them. And so I flip all four. And you can see how that's a lot faster. Um, but how do we actually make it work in Minecraft? The answer to that is around signal strength. So let's go back to seven. If we can output a signal strength of 15 for a zero and zero for a one, as I'm showing with these arrows down here, uh, we can feed that into a redstone line. And you can see the redstone signal strength decays as we go along the line. So um, only the eights column has 15, so it goes 15, 14, 13, 12. And we extend it by one more to 11. And we feed that into the side of the comparator on subtract mode with signal strength 15 going in the back. So what happens now 15 minus 11 is 4 so we get a signal strength of 4 at the front and you'll notice that's exactly the right number of bits we need to flip so now we can use a signal strength to flip those bits like so that's basically how it works um it does mean it's limited to 15 bits because that's the the maximum signal strength we can get from redstone um but what's really interesting is that if you skip some bits, it still works exactly the same. So you, you can make it an eight bit counter with all of the slices too, you know, too wide, basically. And that can make it easier to use in some builds. So it doesn't need any change to the design. It just needs you to miss out some of the slices. The other thing that's um, quite interesting about these is what if you want to count down instead of up? Well, actually, it's, it's basically the same thing. It, it makes sense, right? That if you're if you're flipping four bits to get from seven to eight, if you flip them back, you'll go from eight to seven. So you actually want to do pretty much the same thing for subtraction as you do for addition. Um, except that when you want to subtract, we need to change the signal strength so that a one now gives out a 15 and a zero gives out a zero. And we feed that back into our comparator and that will give us a signal strength of four, which is covers those four bits and we go from eight to seven. And that gives us the ability to count down with pretty much the same design. It essentially just outputs via a torch to invert the signal. Other than that, it's pretty much the same, little bit of change to the wiring to make that torch fit in. All right, enough of me rabbiting on, let's go and have a look at how to build it. Okay, so we've got an empty void world, just one block in there to help me start the build. And we're going to uh, show you how to do that. So start off with a dispenser facing downwards, put a powder snow bucket into there i'm going to come around this side it doesn't really matter which way you go but i'm going to place a glass block down horizontally uh, diagonally sorry from it with a comparator on there a solid block in front of that then come down two with a glass block and we are then going to place um redstone dust on here and then diagonally down again back towards the dispenser uh, we want to go one two three blocks and we're going to have dust on the first and the last one 
with a repeater on a default of one tick in between. Then come over this side, place a block diagonally up from here with redstone dust on it. Another block just there with a comparator. It must be on some tracks mode, so make sure his front light is lit. And put a block in front of that with redstone dust on it. And finally, a target block just there. So that's actually a, a working uh, one bit binary counter. So one bit isn't very useful and doesn't have a, a good output at the moment. So if you want to see the output, I can put a torch just here and place a redstone lamp underneath there. Okay, so what I need to do to make this work is I just um, will power and unpower this comparator. So if I put a lever here and you can see I've counted from zero to one and uh, back to zero. Like I say, not very useful at the moment. So I'm just going to copy this across and I'm going to make 14 copies of this. So we've got 15 bits in total and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, and there is its final glory, and that is a 15-bit binary counter. I say final, there's actually three more things I want to show you. The first is that I'll put it on a clock, and that'll be a 10 game tick clock. So I'll show it to you running at 10 game ticks, that's five redstone ticks, or uh, two pulses a second. And that's the maximum speed that this will do. And we also want to be able to reset everything to zero. So if we've been counting away, we want to start again, uh, I need a reset circuit. That'll be a fast reset circuit, which again is synchronized. And final thing is what if you want to set a specific value to start with? Uh, I'll show you how to be able to uh, set specific bits of your binary counter. Okay, let's start the clock. So I'll get rid of this for now. And I want some a block behind there. And I'm gonna come out one, two, three, four, five. So this is a, a 10 game tick clock. So I need an observer there. I'm going to put a, uh, a rail just here. Another block there. I don't have any things I need. Let's start by collected nose. Um, a redstone repeater, dust just here. That redstone repeater needs to be on four ticks. And I want another block above it. And we're going to put a torch just here. So this clock has a period of um, 20 game ticks. That's 10 ticks on, 10 ticks off. So these are, you know, count redstone ticks, that's four for the repeater, one for the torch. So it'll be on for five redstone ticks, off for five redstone ticks. The observer detects rail going on and off, and therefore it'll give us a one tick output every 10 game ticks. So uh, all I need to do is add a bit of dust here. Let's put a lever there first, so I can turn it on and off. Bit of dust there, and we can watch that counting away. I can turn it off like this. Okay, what about the reset circuit? So to do that, we're gonna come up here. We're gonna put blocks on top of our comparators all the way along. And I want redstone dust along here. Redstone dust along here. And I'm going to place a torch to power that dust exactly here, like that. And then, because all of this dust is lit, all of these torches will be turned off. There we go. And a button on this block here will depower all that dust, and it will allow certain torches to come on. And which ones will come on? Well, exactly the ones where we have lamps lit. So if you see the lamps are on bit two, five, and six, when I press the button, you'll see torches two, five, and six lighting up. And therefore, it instantly resets everything to zero. Okay, so the last thing, what about setting specific bits? Well, the problem is I want to be able to power each individual um, dispenser, and that's quite difficult because they're surrounded by other things at the moment. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a comparator just here. And if I grab my piston, uh, composter, and my pumpkin pie, I can put a sticky piston just here with a composter on top of it. And I'm just using the pumpkin pie to give me 
one level. You can use something else if you like. Uh, it's just a pumpkin pie. Always gives you a level every time you use it. Okay. And then just pop a button on the piston here. And whenever you press that, it'll switch that individual bit across. So you build this all the way along if you like. And then you'll be able to control each bit individually. Okay, that's all I've got to show you today. So I hope you liked it. Um, if you did, please subscribe to the channel, drop me a like, and I will be showing you my four game tick binary counter in a future video. So keep an eye out for that if you need something faster than this. Just note though, the output's not synchronized unlike this one. Okay, so it's really good for fast counting, but not for synchronized outputs. All right, I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.